I'm checking the temperature and humidity of this room by looking at a web page on my phone. I'm doing this by using an ESP8266 Wi-Fi module, system on a chip, and a temperature sensor. At the moment, it's just a prototype on a breadboard, but I'm planning to make this into a useful module so that next winter I can monitor the hibernation of my tortoise to make sure he doesn't get too cold or maybe get too warm and start waking up. And of course, there are no end of uses for a module with such a wide range of capabilities. The ESP8266 is offered like this as a module or on a development board which will have more components and maybe USB connectivity built in. I'm using the ESP12F version, which is small, easy to add to a product, and has lots of memory and great capabilities, including 11 digital pins and one analog pin. And of course, you can use it just like an Arduino board and program it in the same way. Finding out about how to connect it and how to use it took me quite a while. And I've now pulled all this together into a useful step-by-step -step guide which is on our website, q26.co.uk, showing how to connect it with circuit diagrams or schematics and everything you need to know to get the module up and running. So today in this video, I'm gonna show that process in a few short steps and let's get started with wiring it up. The first part I need, of course, is the ESP8266 module. This is an SMD component with metric spacing, so unless you are placing it onto a custom-made PCB, the best way to connect it is via a breakout board. You can buy these with the module already soldered and tested, and they have header pins for connecting to or plugging into a breadboard. This makes 11 digital pins available, along with one analog pin and an onboard LED, as well as the connections needed for programming and resetting. On the ESP12F version, which I'm using here, the onboard LED is linked to pin 2. It's important to note that the onboard LED is inverted. If you set it high, the LED goes off, and to turn it on, you have to set it to low. To program the board, you need a USB to serial adapter. These are plentifully available and easy to use. You just need to make sure that you have one that operates at 3.3 volts, which most of them do. If you're making a self-contained device, then you can just program the module and then take it away and use it without including the extra adapter board. In your final product, just make a few pins available to connect to in case it has to be reprogrammed in the future. You'll also need some resistors to pull some pins to either ground or 3.3 volts. If you're opting for manual reset, you'll need two button switches. For an automatic reset, the circuit includes a couple of small NPN transistors and two more resistors. Even though it's not needed during automatic upload, it's a good idea to add a reset button anyway in case you need to restart a device that you've made. Reset is important here as the module needs to go into program mode for upload and then return to its normal operating mode as the upload finishes. I'll go through that process once the connections are made, so now I'm also going to need a breadboard and some connecting leads to put together my experimental setup. A few LEDs with resistors will also be useful to try out some programming. Having gathered all that together, now let's look at how to wire up the module. Firstly, the ESP board needs power and ground, and it's essential that the voltage supplied is 3.3 volts. So whether you are using a power supply or getting voltage from another board, make sure the jumpers are set to 3.3 volt and not 5 volt. Pin 15 needs to be pulled to ground by a 10K resistor all the time, so if you use this as a data pin, keep in mind that its normal state is to be low. The chip select pin, labelled CH underscore PD, needs to be pulled high, also using a 10K resistor. To add a basic reset switch, which you can use to restart any program when it's running, Connect the reset pin to ground via a push button switch and also pull it to the 3.3 volt line using a 10K resistor. This makes sure it's either high or low, but not floating. To upload a program, or sketch as it's called in Arduino language, the program pin, also known as digital pin zero, is used to put the ESP8266 into programming mode. This pin needs pulling high with a 10K resistor for the system to be in normal operational mode, and then if it is pulled low with a switch to ground via a 470 ohm resistor, programming mode will be triggered. Now the system has everything needed to upload a program with a manual reset. 
To do this, hold down the reset button and then hold down the program button as well. Release the reset button first and as the chip resets it will start in programming mode. Release the program button and then upload the sketch. For auto reset, we remove the program button switch and use signals from the RTS and DTR connections from an interface board. The signal from DTR goes to the base of an NPN transistor which has its collector connected to reset and its emitter connected to RTS. A second transistor connects to pin 0, the programming pin, in a similar pattern. Now when a sketch or program is uploaded, the setting of program mode and reset sequence is handled automatically with no need for any buttons to be pushed. This schematic and detailed information is available on the product page of our website q26.co.uk. Just go to the front page and click on product info at the top for a list of informative pages. So that's how to connect an ESP8266 and upload programs to it. As you can see mine is running here on a breadboard and telling me the temperature and humidity on a web page on my computer or my phone or whatever. So if you found this useful please like the video, subscribe to our channel or maybe leave a comment and in part two I'll be looking at how to set up the Arduino software, download the libraries and everything else you need to run programs on your ESP8266. Thanks for watching.